Formatting in Python is very different from other programming languages. In languages like PHP, we have this opening syntax and every variable starts with a dollar sign. So it'll say hello is equal to hello, and then we've got semicolons, and then we can print hello. Actually, we don't print, we echo hello. And that is, and so this is PHP syntax formatting. We don't do any of that in Python. In JavaScript, we use a lot of curly braces as well. So in JavaScript, you'll see something like function, name, curly brace, and does some stuff. And you'll see a lot of curly braces in JavaScript. You will not see them very often in Python. Python instead has opted in for a cleaner style of coding. And it looks a little weird at first, but once you get used to it, it is a beautiful thing. And it makes your code really easy to read right away. So Python largely works on indentation. So we're going to look at a few more advanced features right now. You don't need to know these, but I just want to show these as a demonstration of how formatting works in Python. So in Python, every piece of code originally should start on the very left, right here. So we can create a new variable like course is equal to Python for everybody. And because it's right up against that side, Python will immediately evaluate that and say, mm, okay, there's a variable and inside that variable is Python for everybody. Let's go ahead and add space there. That will drive me nuts. Now the JavaScript example that I wrote was like function does a thing, curly braces. And then if we wanted to, we could write some stuff here. Usually you see some indenting, but it's actually not necessary. And it's not necessary in languages like PHP either. What Python does instead is, I'm gonna create a function here, but don't worry, you don't need to know this right now. We'll learn about functions down the road. But Python does this thing where it's like, okay, define a function called name. And instead of a curly bracket, we use a colon. And then instead of having a closing curly bracket, we simply indent everything. So we could put a variable in here, welcome is equal to hello world. And as long as we have logic in here that's always indented, Python will say all of this indented code belongs to this function. And to get out of that function, we can always just delete and go back to the leftmost space. So as an example, I'll get rid of this because that's going to break my code. But then I could say print hi, 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 hi. And it still works. Versus if I indent this, it doesn't work. Python now knows that there's a function named name. Again, don't, you don't have to worry about knowing what a function is at this point in time, but it didn't print high, and that's because it wasn't hugging that left side. In other programming languages, you'll also see lines ending with a semicolon. We don't use those in Python. You can use them, but generally we just don't. We don't need them. And so anytime you put something on a new line, Python says, oh, there's a new line. Okay, I understand that that's a new line. Whereas in other programming languages, you sometimes need to put a semicolon, and that tells the program that there's a new line there. But Python is smart enough, it just says, oh, there's a new line, okay, well, do something new. So the biggest takeaway from this particular lesson is actually just that indenting. So we don't use curly braces like you might have seen in movies or other programming languages, we always use indenting. And whenever something is indented, it means it belongs to the thing that is outdented most from it. So as an even more complex example, we can have another function in here called thing, and we could say print hi, 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 hi in here. Actually, that's a bad example. Let's do hello, 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 hello. And this print statement now belongs to this function, and this variable belongs to this function. So indenting is very important. Now there's two ways to indent in Python. You can either use tabs or spaces. There's been this ongoing war forever. What's better, tabs or spaces? But I think most people prefer to use spaces. However, we tend to just use that tab key. So if you hit tab, you'll see that it's jumping four spaces at a time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hmm, 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 And last but not least, and again, this is a more advanced subject, but if you ever see 
some sort of indenting and there's nothing underneath it, Python will freak out about that. So you could say if something is true, and again, you don't need to know what that is right away, but you could say if something is true and it needs to be indented for it to run whatever code is in here. If you simply just said if true, and then over here we did print hello, this is going to give me an error. Indentation error, to be exact, and it's because it's expecting an indented block. It is expecting some code to live in here. And if there is no code in there, you can just type pass, and that will tell Python you can still execute this, but hey, there's nothing in there, so just don't do anything. Just skip it. And it works. So again, the biggest thing about formatting in Python really is indentation. Try to keep it the same. So if you're using indentation of four spaces, use four spaces everywhere. Don't use four spaces here and then use tabs here because Python will think those are different things. So if you use spaces, stick with spaces. If you use tabs, stick with tabs. And typically, if you indent with four spaces or one tab, then always use four spaces. Use four spaces here, use it here, and then you can also use four spaces here. And that just keeps your code looking nice and symmetrical and keeps it nice and readable. So that's formatting in Python. You're going to see this throughout the rest of the course, and it's good to know why this works and how it works.